Every June in Powell River, British Columbia, Canada, on the ancestral lands of the Kahaman Nation, people gather from all over the world for the Prisma Festival. Join us as we bring you a taste of the music, conversation and celebration for which this event has become known. We do look forward to welcoming you back to the concert hall someday. But until then, this is Prisma on the Couch. Welcome to Prisma on the Couch. I'm Arthur Arnold, Artistic Director of Prisma. And I'm Andy Rice, the Marketing Manager. And we're here in the Evergreen Theatre, the heart of Prisma. And uh, thank you so much for joining us from your home, possibly even your couch. And uh, this looks a little different for us. This is not a normal not a normal Prisma. No, it's not. Usually there's an orchestra on stage, 80, 80 students from all over the world who do auditions, who, who do uh, recorded auditions, and we pick the best students. Not 80 students do auditions, hundreds of students do auditions. And we have gone through that process. We selected our 80 students, and then the pandemic, pandemic hit. So, unfortunately, uh, we had to cancel the traditional Prisma Festival. But we are not cancelling the music and we are not cancelling the lessons, the academy part of Prisma. Currently, our students are having master classes with the guest artist over Zoom. And we'll share that with you. We've also been recording Prisma for the past several years. And we've got lots of archival footage in the... Uh in our back pockets here. It's not going to win any Oscars, so uh, go easy on us. And neither is our hosting, but uh, hopefully well, you mean, can see. <laughs> we have to learn it on the spot. I mean, Andy is a publicity guy. He knows everything about designing and about how to uh, smooth the newspapers and the TV uh, people. And, and I'm usually, uh, you know, in music and conducting. But, um, you know, we, we, we really feel strongly as Prisma, the whole team, the board, the staff, you know, that we want to give back to our audience, to our supporters, to our sponsors, our donors, and especially to keep providing education for our students. So for the next couple of weeks, we're going to take you behind the scenes. We're going to take you back into the audience where we'd love to see you again when we can finally do this again in person. But uh, for what's going to be a virtual event, I think we need a uh, official welcome. So let's, uh, let's hear from Palo Verde Mayor Dave Formosa. Hi, I'm Dave Formosa, Mayor of the City of Powell River. It's my pleasure and honour to welcome you to Prisma on the Couch. We enjoy this beautiful land here by the sea within the traditional territory of the Klohomin First Nation. They're our friends and partners. We enjoy living in this great land together. And it is my honour to welcome the world, all of you, to come and join us for Prisma on the Couch. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And, and you are right. It is, it is really welcoming the world. Um, usually we get students and guest artists and audience from all over the world, really. And of course, many people from Powell River, but also beyond, from Vancouver Island, Victoria, Vancouver, but also from other countries that come to Prisma as audience. So I'm, I'm really glad the mayor mentioned that. And, and, and the mayor is just an amazing supporter. So you may be wondering, if you're new to Prisma, what it is that we do. And we could walk you some, through some of that stuff with words, but the images tell a pretty powerful story as well. Yeah, and, um, and, and uh, last year, um, Claudia Medina, who is a fantastic uh, videographer, made uh, this movie for us. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's have a look at her, at her movie.
so much joy on and off the stage. I know. It's cool to see that back again. Yeah, I'm, I'm sad that, that we have to miss this. But at the same time, I'm happy that we can do this Prisma on the Couch and that, um, that I see back all these faces, you know, and, and these warm memories. And we have seven years of memories. You know, uh, I don't know whether you noticed, uh, ladies and gentlemen, but there was this row of um, people in, the, in that movie sitting on, this, on the edge of this stage. And um, that was a workshop for, for auditioning. That was a workshop of how you get a job as an orchestra musician. It's very hard to get a job. There is like hundreds of people coming to get to one position, to play for one position. And the uh, first round is often, um, is actually usually always behind a screen. So you don't even see who's playing. So as a musician, you're behind a screen playing for you don't know who. And it has to be perfect. If you make one scratch or whatever, you're out. So that's one of the things we, we train and that you saw there. But also all these, these things about Prisma on the beach and, and, and the, the crowds and the, the, the happy faces. I'm going to miss it. But we got new memories this year. That's the other cool thing. I, I think, well, you're going to see this pretty, pretty soon, actually, in the next, next uh, couple days, next couple weeks. But uh, we've been connecting with students um, and guest artists and each other, really, staff and uh, board members and, and people in the community. And we're making new memories. It's a different way. It's a different prisma. But we're still making new memories. And, and it's got a little, a little bit of that spirit, more so than I, than I expected, honestly. Yeah. But we're going to go back in time. Uh, back to 2015, one of the earlier, earlier Prismas. That was year three, right? Correct. So uh, there's a piece, and Arthur's got kind of a childhood memory associated with that one. Yeah, we are going to listen to, uh, to Stravinsky, uh, the uh, Firebird Suite, the 1919 Firebird Suite. Not the whole suite. We start, um, we, we'll listen to about the last eight minutes or so, starting at the Berceuse, the, the cradle song. And I remember listening to this recording as a kid, um, you know, um, frequently. And there was this, I could curl up in a chair to just listen to this gorgeous music. But what you'll hear is a bassoon solo, an oboe solo, and, and a wave in the strings. And again, the bassoon, the oboe, and the wave in the strings. And then there's a chord in the flutes, and the harp, and, and the strings. And uh, that chord, in the recording I had, and it was a, a well-known orchestra, but that chord was out of tune. And I decided then, like, if I ever conduct this piece, I'll make sure that chord is in tune. And you know, you can say whatever you want about this recording today, but that chord is in tune. So enjoy. Thank you. 
Well, that was pretty majestic. Cool, eh? Very cool. Yeah, it brings back those memories, man. That orchestra was great. That piece is, is amazing. Yeah. And... Uh, was that Eli Schweitzer in the cello section? Indeed, from, you saw that. From Powell River. Eli Schweitzer from Powell River. And actually his sis sister, Hannah, also uh, played in, in the Prisma Orchestra yeah. one year. And was our librarian last year. And is our librarian, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, did you enjoy that, Andy? I did. That was a really good pick. That was super and cool. And did you enjoy that, ladies and gentlemen? I sure did. Well, let's go on. So we're going to take a little trip in a roundabout sort of way to the Netherlands. We're going to visit one of our guest artists. And uh, Arthur knows her pretty well. Yeah, it's uh, Pauline Oostenrijk. And um, when we were kids, uh, we played every now and then in the same youth orchestra. So that's how we got to know each other. Uh, my brother knew her from, from uh, music camps. Uh, my sister became an oboe player, so they knew each other professionally. And Pauline has had an incredible career and is a beautiful player. Uh, she has been the, the principal oboe of the, the, the Hague Philharmonic, the Residency Orchestra in the Netherlands, for 25 years and uh, decided to follow uh, like her own, well, being an uh, oboist was her passion or it's her passion, but she thought I'm not going to stay for 25 more years in the orchestra. I want to have a more artistic freedom and going to explore other things in life. So we'll hear her hear about uh, her reaction on the current pandemic, how she deals with it. And, um, and yeah, it's uh, going to be a nice little surprise. Hey, that's great to see you. <laughs> Thanks. Great to see you too. In Prisma <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> It would be better to see you there. Right. <laughs> How are things in Holland? Um, well, uh, we are slowly coming out of the lockdown. Very, um, very slowly. So no concerts yet. Ah. But we can do some teaching uh, with very severe uh, measurements uh, like washing your hands all the time and keeping distance. And we have these plexiglass, what's that word in, in yeah, English? Plexiglass. Plexiglass. Yeah. <laughs> well. Three between the, the student and me. So, yeah. So, so particles from the playing don't travel? Yeah, so they, they come, uh, the, right, that's the idea. And of course we have these, um, the reeds. Yes. Uh, so we don't touch each other's reeds and if I have a new reed for the student, I put it uh, in alcohol, 96% alcohol before, <laughs> wow. and wash it afterwards so that the student doesn't become uh, drunk. <laughs> uh, but then the reed is uh, clean, yeah. Yeah, wow. So that's how we manage, yeah. yeah. But it's such a strange time, yeah. It, it is, it is. And it's I had sad. Last weekend I had this streaming concert some, somewhere in a big church. I played all by myself and they streamed it so that everybody could hear it. But it's very strange. I was talking to the, to the audience, which wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, that's unnatural. Yeah, it is. And we, we need a connection with our audience, right? Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. It's it's, it's, it, it was difference. not very ex inspiring. <laughs> what did you play? Uh, I played these pieces uh, for uh, oboe solo by the Dutch composer Bernard van den Sichtenhorst Meijer. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 books to that guy. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Beautiful music, very nice. M nice pastoral, meditative kind of music for oboe solo.
Um, so I was wondering about um, some of your more recent projects. Like, what have you been working? I heard you had a CD or something. <laughs> yeah. So what What about that? Um, I made a CD in which I play uh, a piece of oboe, three minutes, a piece of piano, three minutes, a piece of oboe. So there's a lot of variety in, in it. Uh, and it's all about nature and landscape. And in the CD, in the booklet of the CD, I, I put um, uh, um, poems of um, by a, a Dutch uh, poet from that same period, uh, and also their uh, English uh, translations. So it's it's also for English speaking people. It, it's it's they are so beautiful, and they're also about flowers and birds and and nature. This is my new CD. The notes are swallows. We hadden natuurlijk een leuke release party willen organiseren om dit te vieren, maar dat kan helaas niet vanwege de coronacrisis. Maar wat ik nu wel ga doen is het eerste exemplaar aanbieden aan mijn vader en moeder. En daarom staan wij hier voor het appartementencomplex waar zij wonen. Ja. <laughs> uh, papa en mama, ik wil jullie het eerste exemplaar gaan overhandigen van de CD. Ik pak hem er even bij met handschoenen. Ah, de pap. Pap, dankzij jou kwam ik met die mooie gedichten van Dermo in aanraking. Mam, jij hielp me met het vertalen van de informatieteksten. Uh, en aan jullie allebei heb ik te danken dat ik vroeger op hobo en pianoles mocht. Ja. <laughs> dus bij deze een uh, exemplaar van de cd. Je mag hem hierin doen. So did you enjoy that, uh, Andy? Yeah, that was a sweet moment with her little CD delivery to the parents. It's kind of sweet. It's a beautiful CD. I gotta check that out. I haven't actually listened to any more than that clip, but it's neat that she's well versed on oboe and piano. And yeah, very talented uh, yeah. musician, and uh, and great. It's about nature and. Uh, yeah, yeah that poem, whole time. poems connected to it. Yeah, and that was a little glimpse at uh, a few of our masterclass students as well that she was working with. That's right. We saw the actually the full uh, oboe section of the 2020 orchestra there uh, at the end of her masterclass. And we we do every masterclass we do a quick Q and A with or quick we do a Q and A question and answer with the guest artist and the and the students can can ask anything about the profession. And, and, and profession related and you know there's something so much to learn and 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 uh, we saw the full oboe class there uh, and, and this Anna Betuzzi who was there last year too um, two, two of them are return students by the way um, Anna and uh, and and uh, what's her name um, Abigail Abigail thank you and uh, sorry Abby and um, Anna had this question about her project so she had heard apparently through the you know, whatever, H heard about this, this new CD recording. So uh, that's 
how we found out. I'm sad that people aren't going to get to hear the oboe section this year because that was going to be a solid section. We had some really, really talented so people let's, in let's, that section. So let's find for the future, for one of the future Prisma on the Couches, let's play some of the oboe masterclass too. All right. I don't know when we do it, but we'll do that. Well, we've got two weeks, so exactly. we'll squeeze it in somewhere. Perfect. And uh, how about we continue with something else now? Yeah, well, seeing how our students are good enough to play with guest artists. Um, That's right. Why don't we show the, uh, them doing that? So every year we have, we have a, a chamber music concerts with our guest artists on stage, but we also plan music, bigger groups of chamber music, where students and guest artists play together in the ensemble. And this is for students incredible to sit next to a, you know, an experienced musician and, and play together and hear the timing and the breathing and the sound quality and mix with that. So that's uh, what we are going to listen to now from Dvorak Serenade for winds and cello and bass. We're going to hear the second movement, Menuetto. Thank you. 
feels beautiful. And what an opportunity for students to just kind of, you know, link into that ensemble. They sound like they've been rehearsing that for, they sound like a group, really. Yeah, they, they are a group. Yeah. The sound is so full and, and so warm and so dark. And they were very good students, right? And, and, and they, they really blend with the guest artists. And uh, you know, we did that in, in, in every year in Prisma, we do that. But our first year in 2013, we were going to play, um, I think it was actually Carnival of the Animals oh, yeah. uh, with narration of John Silver for the Prisma for Kids concert. And, um, and there, was, there was a great moment. I'm not going to tell you about it. You have to see it for yourself. Enjoy.
normally, girls play on boy violins, <laughs> and boys <laughs> play on girl violins. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. Girls play louder because they're playing a man, and men tend to play more gentle because it's a woman. <laughs> Well, that was awfully brave of you in the first year of Prisma. Let's get a bunch of international guest artists. Let's you know, hopefully have a 2014 and then push our limits with them by asking them to <laughs> it was play so violins. Fun. And they didn't know it. I just put them on the spot. Well, and, and those violins are millions, worth millions of yeah. dollars, right? Yeah. But uh, there is a distinct difference. It's, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we have to have some fun too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But um, uh, next, we are going to listen to Gordon Cherry talking to the trombone students in a Zoom masterclass um, to, um, about how to actually stay motivated during the COVID-19 period. It's hard for musicians because we need to play for other people. And we can't. We, everything got cancelled. What do you do? How do you stay motivated? And Gordon has a really has really good advice for all of us. So let's listen to Gordon Cherry. Do you, have, do you also have any tips now, you know, during this period of time that we are, we are stuck at home, do you have any tips to stay motivated to practice? Well, a lot of people are getting, um, a lot of people have been recording themselves uh, using a piece of software. I heard it's called acapella. Yeah. where you use the headphones. I haven't used it myself. Does it have a click track? Maybe it has a click track and you, you have an ensemble piece and you play all the parts <laughs> and you record yourself. And some of the top professionals have been putting out some really great recordings of themselves uh, over the past few months. So that's one way to be motivated <coughs> is to get a really great recording of yourself, whether it's a four part or eight part. One of the fellows did, uh, his name is Ross Holcomb, and he did a recording of Back to the Future for I think 12 trombones, and he was playing all the parts. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> amazing yeah so uh, there that gives you an idea of what you can do so here's a piece uh, by that I publish and it's been recorded by Tim Dowling and Tim is a trombonist um, who plays in an orchestra in the Netherlands and uh, he has recorded Fantasia and Fugue in C minor for eight trombones. <laughs> Thank you. 
So that gives you an idea. Uh, you notice what behind him was a really nice contrast and he was, he, the video was good and you notice it had a nice reverberation to it. And uh, so I'm just gonna play you one more. There's a fellow by the name of Jim Nova. He's the second trombonist in the Pittsburgh Orchestra. And he does Star Wars. Yeah, he's the man. Um, yeah, here we go. something that would keep you busy is get the software find a piece of music it can start off with duets or you can go all the way up to 10 or 12 parts if you want and then perform each track you have to lay down one track first and you play with a click track with the headphones and you get one track perfect at a time and that's going to really improve your playing because you've got to play in tune with yourself. You've got to play <laughs> together with yourself. It's got to be technically perfect and so on. And of course, it's got to sound good. So that's one way of getting yourself uh, motivated is to just have a project like that. And then you put it up on YouTube and hopefully you get tens of thousands of people watching it. So. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was a very, a lot of precise detail from Gordon Cherry and and you know you need this detail to to play in an orchestra and to play together with others and to actually get a job in an orchestra and it's crazy it's it's amazing that that happens here in Powell River and one of my favorite things about Powell River is that you never know who you're gonna run into so Arthur was out for a walk the other day on the seawall and he ran into two of our longtime volunteers Madeline and Fraser Field and they were out for a bike ride and he told them about Prism on the Couch, and they were pretty excited. Check it out. Here are Madeline and, and, and Fraser Field, Paul River Rides and Prisma supporters. So tell me about, I mean, look at this, look at this here. Come on, <laughs> this, is, this, is, uh, this is where we are. I don't know where my dog is, or my dog dog's, is there. My dog's right there. And, and you guys just told me you are going to miss Prisma. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I was okay. talking to a friend yesterday and, she, and we were saying how much we were going to miss Prisma this year. So, and then it was just nice to run into you. And, and now we have Prisma us. on the couch. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. Prisma on the couch is you know, coming I figured, up. I figured there's no way Arthur's going to let this go. Something's got to come out of this year in terms of beautiful orchestral music and yeah. solo performances. Yeah, so that's lovely. Yeah. 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 Great so to hear. What, what draws you to Prisma? What, what? Oh, Arthur, I love the, I love the live, I love the symphonic. I, I've always loved choral music. I've never really had an opportunity to experience and learn to, you know, about symphonic music. So I love Prisma because I, it's actually, I prefer it now to, to, to choral. I, I've learned so much about the instruments, about um, the music that I'm listening to, you know, when, we're, when you're playing concerts and things. I love the live interaction with the orchestra players and the fact that it's so accessible. Right. right. If we were down in Vancouver or something, you're looking at a distance and you have no, you have no personal contact. But um, no, I, I love I it. I find it more exciting than a professional orchestra, simply because it's so intimate to have an orchestral thing going on that's so intimate and so connected up with the community and with the people that are there. Yeah. And it's just the best. That's awesome. Yeah. And I think uh, we are lucky to have the Evergreen Theatre, right? 700 seater? Yep. Yes. I mean, it's not yes. like uh, nothing. It's no, like... no. No, in a small town like this, it's nice. we're, we're very lucky to have it. Yeah. So what, during the normal years, when Prisma yeah. normally happens, 
how do you see a difference in this in in our little town? How, how do you experience that? Um, well, I, 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 I guess I experience it differently because various people that I know uh, within the musical community or outside it are become regulars at Prisma. Uh, so you see these, you see certain people at Prisma that you see in other in other musical things, but you also see people who you don't see in mu other musical things that are attracted by Prisma. And so I think there's that sense of community that's particular to Prisma. Um, yeah, I think you see the best of Powell River here in Prisma because people, people are there, they're helping, and they're excited. That's wonderful. Now, yeah. one more question. Uh -huh. What's your favorite couch? Favorite couch? <laughs> I like the one on the left. Right now, we are not at home because, in our own home, because we were to be away for six months. I wasn't going to be at Prisma. We weren't going to be at Prisma this year. We were to be away. However, everybody else, we're back home. But our home is rented out. So we're renting now. So we're not on our favorite couch. Our favorite couch is at home. <laughs> That's so, great. Thank you so much for this interview. Yeah, God bless you. Nice to see yeah. you. Arthur. Yeah, you yeah, too. God Enjoy God the first on the couch. Thank you. Well, I hope, uh, Madeline and Fraser, that you were watching. It's a nice view of the Palover Seawall, but uh, how about we take a view at some of the, the music from another past iteration of Prisma? Yeah, this is going to be the last segment uh, of this show, um, and we are going to end it with Mahler's Fifth Symphony. Uh, this is the, the actually the end of the full Prisma Festival 2015, the last, the last part of the last concert. And um, one of the things that attracts students to Prisma is a challenging repertoire. Even professional orchestras need to rehearse really hard to, to nail this piece. And for the Prisma students to do that in, 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 in five rehearsals only, is, is quite something, so I'm very proud of them. Might not be perfect, but it is full of joy and energy. Enjoy. <laughs>
<laughs> yes. What an energy. How tired are your arms at the end of that? I feel like you're like changing a light bulb above your head for like several minutes on end. I don't feel my arms, but I get, I get sweaty, so I'm wet. And, and the, the, the first thing I want to do is get out of that wet suit. Um, and, and a little secret, the last thing I want to do before a concert is get into my suit as late as possible. Just leave that window as short as, yeah. Oh, yes. See, behind the scenes in this, I didn't know that. You see, now you know the maestro mindset, right? Before the, before the concert starts. Yeah, well, you know, we'll talk about that another time. Uh, this is the end of our first episode of Prisma on the Couch. It was wonderful to share all these good memories with you and um, hope you enjoyed it. Furnished by the brick in Powell River, I might add. Thank you so much for these, they're really comfy. Thank you, guys. And hope to see you tomorrow for Prisma on the Couch edition two. Thank you for watching.